You cannot build a house without a proper foundation. It will collapse. You need to fix the infrastructure before they can talk about implementing it. The Minister of Health is being disingenuous about the issue here. UK being used as a model. What like what is your take on the current state of public health care in South Africa? Ah, it's messed up. Sorry, <laughs> maybe a bit poor. You get a very fit and healthy guy getting stroke due to high blood, or somebody getting diabetes. Fit, not obese. Anybody thirty and above, mm. and it's a new case. You do vitals, blood pressure, and sugar. It's standard. I get very finicky. I'm very strict. If now you cannot say to me you want everybody to drive a car instead of walking. Everybody must be equal. There should be nobody driving a Mercedes Benz. Everybody must be driving Polos. Mm. Mm. But the roads are not fixed. Where are you gonna drive those cars? But besides that, with regard to erections. Uh, I need the pills you use. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I think I'll be safe. You know. <laughs>
<laughs> it was just the two brothers, me and my older brother, Temba. Mm. Unfortunately, my dad passed on when I was three years old. Oh, my God. And uh, I was brought up by my mother, mm. a very strong, independent soul. Yeah. That is why now it's, uh, they say, boys marry their mothers, girls marry their fathers. Is it the one you have on your profile picture? Yes. Oh, yes. The lady on my profile picture, that's my mom. <laughs> very, very independent. Even though she was uh, from uh, an extremely prominent uh, Shangan family, the Marevati Sea, you know? Oh, yes, yes. But she never used that to go on in mm. life to, you know? So <laughs> she, she, eh, she was a very independent woman, you know? So, so it was the three of you? It uh, was the three of us, you know? You and your older brother? And my older brother and my mom. But what used to happen because she, she got to get a breakthrough or progress in life early. Um, and, and she was a, a person of, uh, of people, if you can put it that way, you know. She was mm. a very, very uh, social person. So even though we're two, me and my brothers, I'm a brother, um, most of the time you'd find that there's a lot of family members in the house. Oh, yeah. You relatives know. and yes staying there yeah. uh, being there and, and 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 i remember when i was still in primary school she was still going to school she went to teflop she went to i think it's ongo yeah that's university of zuland and stuff like that mm. so you'd find that um, most of the time we're staying with my aunt and takani you know a yeah. uh, cousin sister the uh, fathers are twin brothers mm. yeah so I, I grew up in a kind of a, that environment you know be, a huge family, you know, where yeah. we'll be like all of us. Holidays, like they... No, they will be it. staying there even during the week, schooling, wherever, mm. but they will always be there. You know? Literally, your mom was also raising some of your cousins. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we never had that in a situation whereby it's just me and my brother, you know. Mm. Uh, Sundays, <laughs> you'd find some of my uncles coming in, some of them drunk, and she wants to go to church. And uh, she'll be arguing, when I, when I, you come here, you're drunk already. It's, 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 it's nine o'clock in the morning. Now I'm going to church. I'll be like, oh, so you see this, you see that. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. So she was that kind of a woman, you know. But she was very strict. But she was also mm. very kind, you know. So, yeah, that's how we grew up. And um, uh, there will be issues, you know, now and then. Mm, uh, mm. Uh, Family issues are... Yeah, even... even I call them political issues because she 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 was cousins with Ntangwesi, our former chief minister. Mm. Yeah, at the, her, her mother and Ntangwesi's mothers were sisters. Yeah, yeah. So whenever she made a breakthrough, people would be like, "Ah, no," because it's Ntangwesi's cousin and stuff. But she was not like that. Mm. So, you know, that kind of thing. So, but then she shaped how I am right now. You know, mm. and 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 yeah. So we, we, we had a good upbringing. I'm not going to be apologetic about that. Yeah, there was so, cheese in the fridge. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I used to tell people that <laughs> we would have eggs mm. and, and all sorts of things. And then when you go to school, I got a sweet tooth. So when you go to school, I'll trade my bread with eggs to, or with some guys who have bread with jam and butter. And I'm like, have this, I'll have that, you know. You know, so yeah, because you you'd crave normal food. I would crave you the had this luxurious uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. I'll be very honest. Chief, uh, my mom used to hate this kind of thing. She was a health kind of freak. She mm. was a nurse by profession. Mm. There would be no jam in the house. There would be no condensed milk in the house. All the stuff I love. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, but she tried very hard for us to be where we are right now, me and my brother. Mm. And then, yeah. Uh, go through primary school. Uh, I think she was chosen to be, be to start Malamlele Hospital as a metro in chief, 1977. Mm. Uh, yeah, but we only moved to Malamlele in 1981, December 1980, I think. Mm. Yeah, so she developed that place and then we stayed for about three years, but she said, no, 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 no. I, I'm tired of this place. It's too hot and I'm really not 
like in the environment here. Mm. There was a lot of politicking, a lot of things. And then her deputy then was uh, 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 the mother to Keshas Baloy, mm. uh, uh, hitman. Was yes. it hitman? Yes. yes. Uh, Bonani, we used to call him Bonani. And she passed on. Uh, the lady under, well, we were young then, but apparently under mysterious circumstances. So my mom freaked out, says, no, 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 I can't stand this. Mm. And next thing, it's me here, I'm leaving. I'm, so I could be next. I could be next, yeah. Mm. So I don't know the full story, I was still young. Mm. Yeah, so. Is, is your mother still alive? No, she passed on 1999 when I was doing my final year in medicine. Oh my God, she never got to see uh, the doctor. Chief, yeah, no, uh, it was the 22nd of July, 1999, it was a Monday. I got mm. the message, I was doing my final year, I was at Shulivan Hospital at the clinic. And um, my aunt, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, Mgwe Nandala, Mam Chetwen, you know, mm. the guys from Gyan. just not the surname, so yeah, these people, so yeah. The, 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 their mother, is my mother's cousin, they were very close. Mm. So when she called me, she says, well, you get out our thing. I was busy with the session with the patients there. Mm. And she says, so you're doing your concept? No, no, no. Uh, we're doing final year. Final year yeah. When you do final year, there's a, I can't remember what they call the course, where you go, you go do kind of outreach. Okay. You go to clinics for about, what, two, three months? Two months, I think. Six weeks, two months, something like that. Yeah. So they posted us to Shiluwani. We're based at Shiluwani Hospital. Mm. Uh, but then go to all the local clinics there. Okay. Yeah. So when she called me, I think it was around 11, 12, she says, no way. I'm like, hey, I'm at the clinic. The sisters are busy showing us one, two, three. She says, no. Do you have time? Can you get out? Then I, I know her very well because I knew my mom was sick. Mm. Yeah, I, then I knew something was wrong. Hey. And, and then she said to me, hey, uh, will you be able to come home? And then I said, okay, is she gone? She says, no, I can't talk. I said, auntie, is she gone? She says, yeah, she's gone. I'm like, oh, gosh. Then I got confused. I'm like, oh, my God, shit. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of people thought, ah, this guy's not going to make it. And I'm doing finally. And I said, no ways I'm going to do it for my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At so least you got to see uh, your first six years, the results. You got to see those distinctions you produced. <laughs> you see, she got to see that. Yeah, no, yeah. look, I... Some of us were naughty from a very early age. You know, I remember she used to tell me, Gwena, mm. nothing. I know you won't fail at school, but hey. Because we were just naughty bunch of boys, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would go. And, and when you were quite, the quite naughty one. You know, those, yeah. those are the dangerous ones. <laughs> <laughs> those are the dangerous ones. You are naughty, but you are quiet. Yeah, yeah, I would disappear from home and come back. Mm. Maybe end of the weekend, we used to go to Venda, the festivals when the Venda was still a homeland. Mm. And yeah, would give her a lot of heartaches and headaches. And but yeah, we, we yeah we, we had a bit of fun. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, that's how it is, you know. And and the the, the influence for you, uh, when did you like take that decision that I'm um, going the medical field? Was it your first choice? What really happened? <laughs> Very interesting. That's a good question. Um, look, when I was doing high school, um, like I said, uh, my mother is from the Maramati family there, yeah. and uh, we already had quite a few doctors in there, mm. and my mom wanted me to be a doctor, and I was not interested, honestly, because when a family gathering says Dr. Charles is Dr. Bongani. And doctors were scarce those days. They were scarce. Yeah. You know, well, Dr. Russell, well, Uncle Martin, Dr. Martin. I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. This is just not on. Everybody's doctor, doctor, doctor. Hey, so I wanted to do chemical engineering. I wanted to be a doctor so bad. Yeah. And I ended up doing that course that you shouldn't have done, chemical engineering. Ah, and I regret yeah. till now. <laughs> yeah, so me, when, you know, when you're doing a, what was it? Then, of course, when at nine, grade 11, mm. you go and you get to know. I think by then, the big companies were aware, A, E, I, C. Yes. And, and, and Sasol. The, the Sasol, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, so they take you out on excursions and you get to know about this. So some guy, I think it was from A, E, C, I, or Sasol. Mm. He was one of the senior engineers there. He was a chem engineer. Yeah. 
Now, this guy says to me, hey, chief, I'll be very honest with you. Mm. Yes, it's a good degree. But because we're living in a funny world, because apartheid was still in full force then. Yeah. He Don't says, come. You, 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 you get a technician, mm. a white technician, who's just got metric probably with one of his M courses. Yeah. I'm an engineer, for God's sake. But this guy, they bring him in. You mentor this guy. Two, three years down the line, he's your boss. Yes. And they treat you like rubbish. Mm. So he says, if you have an opportunity, please don't do this course as much as you may, however you may like it. But mm. just stay away. It's very frustrating. I'm an engineer. People look up to me in a room, but I'm frustrated at work. And, and it's, it sounded very prestigious in those days. Remember it was In the early 90s. No, it was like I'm doing chemical engineering. Mm. And when you go to the field, because when I got, I got to Sasson, yeah. it took me just a day yeah. to realize that this, I sh- I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, something is wrong. Yeah, I, this mm. is not me. Yeah. A- and, and also the fact that it's not easy to even go entrepreneurial. With no, you couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. You need a lot of, uh, you know, stuff yeah, like civil engineering, mm. where you can consult and start from nothing. Mm. Uh, uh, with chemical engineering, I mean, how how are you going to get to build a chemical plant? Exactly. Yeah. So from them with you, the, the guy told you about chemical engineering, but yes. told you don't come. Don't come. Huh? And already my mind was set on doing that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. What do I do now? I said, ah, let me do BSc. I'll s- think about this. I was completely against medicine. Mm. Then I went and did BSc. I measured in a, b- a funny combination, physiology and statistics and mathematics. Mm. Then when I finished... Where were you doing it? Medunza. Medunza, yeah. So when I finished, I was supposed to go to England. Mm. I was supposed to go and do, uh, uh, was it biomedical engineering? I can't remember. They accepted me mm. at, at Oxford. And then because of visa things and what, what they delayed, I think it was supposed to start, I can't remember, early, early in the year. But I had applied there and also applied at UCT to do actuarial science. Yeah. So they That's took after your, 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 your BSc. My BSc. Yeah, so they accepted me at Oxford and then accepted me at UCT for actual science. Mm. Then I said, okay, this thing is taking long, visas, what, 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 what. And my mom, because I was the last born, she was like a bit anxious. Mm. And then if I were to tell you, uh, I think when I was four years old, uh, there was a, you know, the Swiss. Swiss used to run uh, the. The Swiss mission. The Swiss mission. And, and it's still very big. It's a big deal even now. Yes. I've seen when people get very in Isfumbalo. Yeah. By, by Ambala. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge thing. It's a big thing. Yeah. So when I was four, I think, um, there was a lady called Metron Rouse. She was running in the hospital mm. with uh, Dr. Jacques. Jacques, I think, was French. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was a medical superintendent, what they used to call them that time. Now they are what they what they call I can't remember what they call these people now. When she left back to Switzerland, she wanted to go with me. Mm. <laughs> and then they packed everything, they put everything in the car. I think they're driving some bit. They were going to catch a train, I think, in Utrecht to Johannesburg, the airport, and what, what, what. Hey, my mom was you know, very anxious. Mm. Now I got into the car. I think as we're leaving, we're staying at a place called the uh, New Stands, uh, just be, be, be behind the hospital. I would drove for four kilometers. I started crying and screaming. Say, I am go- not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going home. Bye. When you were four? I was four. Yeah. Then they took me. B- I just got emotional. Look, uh, mama's boy going out. And I'm like, I, this doesn't need to write this. Mm. Yeah. So when I go to finished my degree and my mom was a bit anxious. She wanted me to do medicine. Mm. And I was not interested at all. Okay, I got accepted at Oxford. I got accepted at uh, UCT. I'm like, okay. And and remember by then, I mean, for instance, to be accepted to do actual science at UCT. Yes. It was a big deal. Ah, it was Uh, big. It's few blacks. It means even the screening process. 
they must have look, looked at your academic performance and everything. Yes. Because yeah. I remember when we got the... Okay, I was taken into second year by virtue of the fact that I've done BS and I got a bit of credit. Mm. <laughs> I got some few credits. So when we got to the class, uh, the, 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 there was a class called uh, Math of Finance. That was the actual course in itself. Mm. Uh, that was something else. We were about 32 in class. And we were about, it was 32, 42, I can't remember, but we were about, we were about 10, 12 blacks there. Most of the other guys were Jews. Who Wait, did you did you go to UCT? Yes, I went to UCT. Mm. Uh, 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 1993. Mm. Yeah. So we got to the class, and like, okay, but then it was an issue, okay, it's actual science, is this the course? you can command any salary you want. Mm. Most companies wanted you there. Even now. That's yes. what you yeah. So now, and, 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 and remember, I decided in January because I was still fighting for this thing, yeah, the passport and all this paperwork to mm. go to Oxford. So I decided in January. And by that time, the scholarships and everything were closed. So my mom had to pay for everything. And then I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's okay, let's go there. And then I went there. Hey, then I realized, no, 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 I'm still young. Weekends, when guys are going partying, you know, would go to, for instance, I, I was staying at, at, at Landress. There was, a, I think it was Checkers and ShopRite, or ShopRite and something. Uh, and, and they would send you on, 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 uh, for you to go and do, uh, uh, what do you call this, um, um, Homeworks, uh, 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 whereby or projects, let's put it that way. Mm. I remember there was a project whereby you had to com uh, uh, compare the tensile strength of plastic bags between checkers. I can't remember what the other shop was. Mm. Then you'd be sitting there. Sometimes they would be like uh, saying, build kites, and then uh, you know you let them fly and you compare. The different types of wingspans and structure, uh, how they have an impact on, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. How feather that thing flies. But then the thing is, it's a Saturday. You want to go have fun. Well, you know, you're sitting there, people are partying, and you have to go up and, and you know, collate all that uh, information. Mm. And then you go up to upper campus. You go to, and then they were using this, you know, and this uh, programs, this computer programs were still primitive. And you go to upper campus, these huge computers, and you still have to slot the stuff into the thingy. And ah, oh, and I was like, ah, I don't, I don't. Ah, that can't. So I remember in June, uh, the head of department of actual science was Professor Slater, I guess. Thick lenses, glasses. Mm. So me, <laughs> I never used to submit uh, projects or submit them late. And then, the, you know, and then the Jew boys, Pella, they were very focused. Hmm. So I remember when we were doing the, 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 the June exam, uh, I went in, I think we were writing at nine, and I was supposed to fly back home uh, in the afternoon. So now I had to catch up because all those projects were comp uh, contributing towards your, uh, your year mark or, your mark is, or yeah. quarterly or, mm. you know. Then I went there, I, I, I tried to catch up I, I remember I spent about what, two, three days without sleeping properly. Now, when I go to the exam room, I had to sleep for 13 I was so exhausted. Then I, I, I just felt a tap on my shoulder. It was Prof. Slater. He says, Masindu, Masindu, wake up. I told you. I told you. In the exam? In the exam hall. Guys are busy writing. Now I'm sleeping. He says, I told you. You need to submit your projects. I told you. I told you. And I tried writing. I think I only wrote for an hour and a half. Then I got out of that thing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's fine. And I'm thinking, thinking about the amount of alcohol you consumed <laughs> that you shouldn't have. And now you're in trouble. And the money <laughs> and all sorts of... Because I used to be... Most of the weekends I would go to Western Cape. Mm. The University of my cousin, Katako, my other cousin, Katako Marwat, was schooling there. So I used to be with him and we chill. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. This thing is not... I can't take this stuff. 
Now, Mara, I'm worried that my mother is financing the whole thing. And and fees, remember UCT fees? Yes, yes. they were hectic. And Ampela was it's saying... It's a nurse. You know what? It means she even took loans there and there for you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't mm. know. I never got to be privy to such kind of things. Mm. Um, I think by then she was a matron. Yeah, she because became a matron in 1977. And probably got help from her brothers and family. I don't know. Yeah. I never got to be privy about such kind of things. But then I was worried that like you know, she's popped money out of her own pocket. Mm. And then I tried to push it. And they took me into second year. The following year, I was supposed to go to third year. So how did you do the first year? No, I did well. You managed to? I managed to scrape through. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I did stats, I did mathematics. So, But I, I felt very stressed. Mm. No, I felt very stressed. So January 2004, as I was supposed to fly back to Cape Town, I told my mom, the, I think it was a day before the day I was supposed to fly back. I said, no, I'm not going back. I should freak out. You were supposed to go to third year now? Third year. And it's, it she was has a paid point. for two years. No, she had paid for one year because yeah. I got into second year. Yeah. So I freaked out. I mean, my mom freaked out. She says, no, 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 no. This is, no, no, no. Are you, are you, are you fine up here? I'm like, hey, mama, no, I'm not going back. I, That's 94. 94 January. Yeah. Hey, ah, no, I, she was not fine. I think she didn't go to work the whole week. And by then she was chief matron at Unimo Hospital. Now, she started phoning a lot of people. Then she phoned one of my uncles. It was uh, Prof. Martin Marwat. Mm. By that time, was head of department at Medwinsa Obstetrics and Gynecology. She says, hey, I've got a problem. That's Don't January. Go. That is January, Chief. I'm supposed to go back. I think it was mid towards end of January. She says, hey, your boy here has given me a headache. I've paid so much money. Usungurik. This man is just not being responsible. What, 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 what? And then he says, hey, let me talk to you. Then he says, chief, what's the problem? Are you a delinquent? I, nah, I, look, I chose that course because I, you know, I looked at the name and how much money you can do. But I think I was not emotionally ready to do. He says, no, no, that's rubbish. So what are you going to do? You see, you're stressing my sister now. Are you going to stay at home the whole year? I said, I don't know. He says, no, that's rubbish. He says, give back the phone to your mom. And then they started talking. I went to the living room. I sat there. I think I was crying. And then she came to me and says, uh, Mbuti says you must come to Pretoria. Yeah, you are instructed. Now it was an instruction. Yeah. Mbuti says you must come to Pretoria. Now you have no option. You must go and do medicine. Yeah, it's a command. It was a command. I said, but mama, I haven't applied. She says, hey. says, come to Pretoria. Mm. You come to me. Then uh, the head, the chief was Prof. Mkhoko. And they were very big friends because he's the one who recruited Uncle Martin to Medwins. I was the head of the department at the University of Mapala. I was listening to uh, an interview with King David yeah. about his work at Medwins. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like, I was so impressed with yeah. what he was trying to do. He is. And yeah. remember, Mkhoko is an obstetrician as well. Mm. So they were big friends with, with Martin uh, from way back then. But was alive. Yeah. So I went there. <laughs> and I, I, look, now my mother is hurt. I didn't like medicine. But now, Eish. to appease her and to try and sort out the mess I'm in, I said, okay, let me go and do this rubbish. So I got let, to me, let me not stay home. Let me not stay home. What was I going to do? Like looking at her every day, probably do funny things every day. So I went to Medusa. Mm. Um, he says, um, for your medicine, you're going to use your BS results mm. because there you have relevant courses because mm. I've done physiology and all the stuff. Yeah. So we were called the Mohokong wave. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yes, the Mohokong wave. Mm. Most of us didn't apply. Just get in there. We went there. They took the whatever results. Mm. I remember I was there for a week. I was staying at my cousin's place in Pretoria, Roland Bright. And then they took all those applications to Prof. Mohoko. And 
then I think after about five days, I went back there. They said, we must come back after five days. Now when I went back there, I found that I was accepted for medicine and dentistry. And I didn't apply for dentistry. I wanted to do medicine. Now I'm like, okay, let me go back home. I came back home. Now, <laughs> now I had to make a decision. Yeah. But so I speak to mama. Yeah, mm. but mama was excited now that I got accepted. Uh, it, it, well, she didn't care which one I did, but obviously she was yeah. interested in medicine. Now, I man, I had to decide which one do I do. So I had read somewhere because I like reading. From an early age, I used to love reading. That's why I still read a lot of newspapers, and a lot of my friends tell me rubbish about reading newspapers. They say, but you can access that online. So I read somewhere that the highest suicide rate amongst medical professionals in America was amongst dentists. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. So it scared you? It scared me. I'm like, maybe it's because of the halitosis every day that I'm smelling people's bad breathes or whatever. I don't I just decided I'm not doing dentist anymore. Hmm. And that's how I got into medicine. Hmm. I did not apply to a bunch of Mohokong ways. And then I started doing medicine. But, but tell me something. Yeah. You, 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 you come in. Yeah. First day class. Or you accepted. You get accepted slot. Yeah. You register because yeah. of registration. Yeah. This is something that you never wanted to do. No, I, I, I never wanted to do that. But you are sitting down. What is your attitude by then? Um, look, I felt cornered. Hmm. I felt cornered, honestly, because I had to appeal my mom. She was heartbroken. She was in a very bad state. Hmm. Yeah. I remember my brother, where was he? was in Johannesburg by that time. I think he was working. Uh, but I felt cornered. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I was working. Yeah, I mm. finished at, at, at the university of Uganda. Man, I just said, look, let me get this over and done with. <laughs> let, me, let me just do it for let me Mami Abesha. It. Yes, because yeah. I got no other options right now. I messed up the ethnicity. Mm. Uh, I didn't want to go back. And I love playing sport. You know, some people don't know that I'm. I love sport. If anything has got to do with hands, basketball, tennis, mm. anything. I was mm. very good at basketball and tennis, and, and and table tennis and squash. So I just felt, look, as long as I can do something. And still, she was paying. Remember, I decided in January. I had no scholarship. I had nothing. I had no bursary. She had to pay out of her own pocket. And previously, the previous year, she had to pay out of her own pocket as well. So I felt very oh, guilty. Wow. I felt very guilty about it. But then, <laughs> to my surprise, I started enjoying medicine. Mm. Because with medicine, it was unlike actual science where you do projects. Medicine, you go to class, well, the first three years, you just attend classes. Mm. You study, you absorb that quickly. You only need to re read or revise them. Maybe the test is on Monday, you do it over the weekend. So I time to do other funny things. So I started enjoying it. You know. is, is there a course called Medunta uh, that groom many doctors to, to love alcohol? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess... <laughs> 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 ah, that's yeah. very funny. Look, I, I don't know. Look, mm. I guess each case should be judged on its own merit. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I'm just yeah. <laughs> bullshitting you. Remember, uh, most of the time, well, what I've noticed, you find that back in the days, I don't know now, the guys who would go to medical school, they were the guys who were quiet, very bright in school, mm. introverts kind of thing. Mm. Now, these guys now have an opportunity now mm. to mingle and get to... The banks love them. You know, interact with other yeah. people. So, you find... Some of them come out being alcoholics. Now they get to engage with women, all sorts of things. Some of this stuff overwhelms them, you know? Mm. So I, I wouldn't know about what happens with guys and stuff and what, what, what. But yeah, you do have cases where we had guys who were very bright, but they got wasted. Yes. Yeah. They never came back with that degree. Some never did and found out they were A students in high school, you know? Mm. And, and some qualified, but then they... Yeah, things just didn't work out. You know, and and, and I think it's, it's, it's one key thing uh, that really 
need to be looked at. There are many people yeah, who produced A's in, in metric and then they come they came back with nothing. And people who were just average uh, started excelling. Yes. Because Why? of focus and exactly. time management. Because this guy thinks I'm an A student. Mm. So ah, this is easy stuff. You know, so you know you start having that kind of psyche. Mm. Then you get this average student who managed to scrape through and get into medicine mm. and says, hey, now I have to focus and pull through. Mm. So you do have those kind of things. Uh, th- I think there must be some analysis. I don't know. But you find the A students perform badly. And the B, C students, they start excelling because they get focused. Then those ones, they like, uh, you know, he goes to he goes to class. He doesn't even have to revise it. Ah, okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Maybe a day before you check it. So, you know, mm-hmm. so now that messes up your psyche. So, yeah, we had such kind of scenarios. L- l- let's get back on track now. Yeah. The, it's you now, first three years, you're beginning to now kind of enjoy. Yes. Kind of see that, okay, fine, this is a career that maybe I can make something out of this. Yeah. It's no longer about your mom now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, then I started enjoying it. And uh, there's one big mistake people make when you're doing courses like medicine. It's a group thing. Mm. You can't study alone. Okay. So uh, I identified a group of guys who I could study with, mm. especially women. Women are more focused. Some of guys, when you go to class, you don't even take notes. You just listen They're the ones who knows which as- assignment, Look, when is it due. They, they, yeah, they're organized. They're women organized. Yeah. File things properly. Put them in folders. So we used to study together. And you find mm. big books like what David said. Mm. That thing has got, I don't know how many, 10,000 pages. It, it's an internal medicine book. I think it was blue in color. And <laughs> women will highlight, put highlighters in. Look, these are the important These are things. the guys. Look, after a lecture, now we just want to rush to the cafeteria and go and eat. But now they go to the lecturer. Yeah, this. Can I ask this? They, you know, they pester the lecturer. Yeah. And they even go to the offices, ask questions, this and this. And then when it's uh, t- exam time or test time, they hey, he said you must focus on this, this and this and this and yeah. this. And they, this. They, they have ways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were about 10 in a group. Mm. We are very focused women. And there were the guys who would push us. Everyone was thinking, no, 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 no. You guys, before you go clubbing, come, 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 come. Let's yeah. revise. It can't work for you yet. No, no, you know. Yeah. So we're smart about it. Let's say we had to do 10 chapters. And 10 chapters were talking about probably 1,000 pages. Thick folders. Yeah. Now, you find somebody goes to, to the library to go and study 10 chapters. I mean, for goodness sake. By the time you hit page 100, you've forgotten what you read about on page 5. And now your mind is getting clouded. You still have another 900 pages to you go. You are through. alone in your room. You uh, want yeah, to study alone. Study, uh, study hall or library. Mm. You're getting confused. The only thing you stand up and go to the cafeteria, try to buy food. You're getting jittery. You are anxious. So we you know what we did. Mm. It's 10 of us, 10 chapters. We would say, Masinge, you go do chapter one. Understand it thoroughly. Come and explain it. Yeah. SD, we're lucky to have the SRC president amongst us. Mm. Uh, so say, SD, it was called... Uh, Simbo, David Mbakaza, Tom, Marco Rell, and all those guys. So say, like, you do chapter two. You do chapter three. You know? Treat it thoroughly. Thoroughly. Mm. And then when we meet, you go and explain it to us. And one thing about this thing is that if you read something, maybe you may not be understanding it that properly, but the minute you start explaining to others, you start to understand it more somehow. So me, Noti, I'm like, I'm doing chapter one. You want to start first? I want to start first. <laughs> do chapter one, do chapter one. Hit it hard. So I'm meeting in somebody's room. We used to go to one of the ladies' rooms. Mm. Chill there. Start with chapter one. There are core questions, core questions, core questions. I explain, explain, explain. Probably for about an hour. You, oh, you take chapter Why do you still have stamina? Yeah. yeah. You know? Then, thereafter, I go sit in the corner. Then somebody takes chapter. So you find out by the time, okay, we we'll go for lunch, we've done probably five chapters. And they stay. And they stay and because... You remember someone explaining. If somebody's you know, explaining and yeah. you're, you're busy holding questions, they explain, you know. And then we'll go for lunch. We'll start at around nine, eight, nine in the morning. And the women were very strict. Mm. The phone will come to your room and say, hey, wake up. We're going to study now. 
By the time you go for lines around one o'clock, you've done five chapters. By the time you finish around five, six in the evening, you've done all the chapters in one day within ten hours. Someone, someone alone is battling now. Battling his own chapter four now. He's getting jittery. The mind is clogged and everything. So what we'll do? It will be on a Saturday mostly, mm. unless if it's, we had a bigger school, we start on a Friday. Then Sundays we we'll do a bit of revision in the afternoon, mm. and then. Evenings, that's when you'll be like studying on your own. The that's when you plot now, yeah, put your dads on the road. Some of the stuff yeah. which you did not understand very well. And that's how you go through medicine. I remember I had a, a, a friend, a girlfriend, she was studying at uh, Dickies. Mm. She, she failed that year. And most of the guys failed. I knew A students. Some guy who was called Oscar, I studied with him way back in, at Katon High School, he was an A student. This guy, he failed the first year. And why? Most of them, okay, adjustment problems. But also it's because maybe the institutions, because those are white institutions. So you isolate the blacks. The whites were given scope. They're still given scope by the professors. Mm. Now concentrate on this, this and this and this. Mm. You not there. You have to start the whole study the whole book. So and you study alone, because sometimes I don't know out of whatever uh, social economic things and whatever how we brought up and whatever, blacks are selfish. You want to study alone. You want to hide things and stuff. But with medicine, you can't do that. This guy flunked his first year, and he got straight A's in medicine. <laughs> the lady, third year, she flunked. Yeah, actually, she was even suicidal. Did, it was the first time she gets below fifty in her exactly. life, probably. And I said, why can't you guys get together and study as a group? Ah, oh, I'm more selfish. Hey, rich man, I do what party? The professor, what I think, I don't know, guys, learn to work together. <laughs> because honestly, I'll tell you, when I was doing medicine, they even thought some of us regarded this scandal. Mm. Because, ah, oh, no, but you fill up parties. Because they would see you I'm doing your thing, oh, but are you still excel? I would be whipping it, and they'll be like, ah, oh, no, it's not normal, this is not normal. But yeah. because they didn't understand the uh, the behind the scenes workings, you mm. know, how we're doing things. And I'm telling you, medicine is that's how it is. <laughs> because it's volumes and volumes and volumes of things you have to do. And now tell me, um, now you have to go to hospitals. Yes, from, okay, partially third year, but so effectively from fourth year. Or, or I could maybe <laughs> ask, like your first contact with a, a human being, a human body, whether it's 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 dead or alive. Yeah, you know how how did it feel? Because one thing that I, I always tell myself, I wanted to be a doctor so bad, but yeah. when I go to the medical centers, I get I freak out. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, in second year, that's when we did anatomy. I remember the head of department was Prof Mokotsaka, a very strict guy. You, the guy was strict. He's the guy who taught us to cut our nails short. He will stand by the door. As you walk in, he checks your nails, mm. he checks your hair. If you've got long nails, he chases you out. You get people sick. Well, what is the whole... The, the whole rationale behind it was that we're going to be doing a dissection. You get a dead body on the table. Mm. Dead. Cadaver, we used to call them cadaver. John Doe's, the guys who probably died, uh, either they were donated, but most of the time they were unknowns, picked up from wherever, taken to government mortuaries, nobody claimed them. Then they were distributed to medical schools. Now you get a full dead human body. You start it from scratch. You've got a book in front of you, it tells you how to open up. So now his rationale was that with your long nails, you're supposed to put on gloves. So Firstly, your nails may pierce the gloves. I'm checking my nails. (laughs) (laughs) Podcasting and nails. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very freaky about nails. Mm. So he says, his rationale was that, look, your nails may pierce the gloves. Mm. And then next thing you stick your fingers inside the dead body. With your hand. Yeah. And now some of the fats and stuff in there. Remember, we open up, cut up everything, intestines, it look, the chest. So the stuff was sticking under your nails there. So even if you wash, most of the stuff under your nails stays there. That's why you find that if your nails are locked, 
if you don't physically try and remove the stuff, even if you wash your hands, there's stuff underneath your nails. And then your nails look black. No baby cure for the ladies. Nothing like that. Short hair. If you've got long hair, you must put on the, what do you call the headgear. Mm. Yeah. So that's how we, you know, we have socialized. So, and funny enough, a lot of these people, especially females, who felt, no, I want to do medicine. I want to be a gynecologist. I want to mm. be a pediatrician. Second year. Hi, uh, most of them. That's when you realize, uh, look, I'm dealing with a dead body here. They freak out. When you go to the cafeteria, when they buy steak, they start eating steak, they think they're eating the, uh, yeah. human parts. Yeah. They would vomit and do all sorts of funny things. They didn't come back. They just left. They said, oh, no, I can't stand this. That's why you guys drink. <laughs> <laughs> so some of us, <laughs> you had therapy then. <laughs> uh, no, I had fun. <laughs> you know, I second year. So that's when mm. we started having contact with the human body. We cut it up. Mm. By the time the year ends, ah, it's in pieces. Because all the stuff is thrown away and all the stuff. And sometimes when you have to go do revision and you go to, 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 dissect, to the dissection hall, sometimes you're on your own. And if the temperature is kept at probably below 10 degrees, I can't but it's very cold even on summer because they had to preserve those bodies. Mm. So where, where you dissect them, even the place is cold. It's very cold. Like this studio. Ah, this is not cold. It mm. was cold. It's just that tutorial is hot. So, you know, you wouldn't feel it that much. But below 10 degrees, I can't remember what the temperature was. Mm. So imagine when you have to go and do a revision, you're all alone. There's 100 bodies there. Now, <laughs> it's at night, 12 midnight. You're busy checking your nerve, and then you hear a door opens or something goes, and you're like, hey, what the heck is yeah, going on? with that thing, dead, dead people. Dead mind. people, yeah. ghosts, and ah, it was scary. You know? So those are the people are sleeping peacefully there. Ah, the gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so to some of us, honestly, mm. I, I mean, you know, I remember at one stage you'd find that you finish late, it's lunchtime, and remember lunchtime is an hour, two o'clock, you gotta be back. And you quickly go to the wash basin. Sometimes there's no soap. And sometimes, honestly, Prof was right. You find that you're busy dissecting. Even if you don't have nails, you somehow put your hand funnily in the there. Glove. And then the glass, yeah. and then the glove, it, it, it gets broken. Now your finger is stuck in there mm. and stuff. When you go to the wash basin, you wash your hands. Sometimes there's no soap. And you're in a hurry. You just wash with just water. Mm. Ah, well, <laughs> you never have that. Never. Yeah, yeah you never have that. Mm. Not during school hours. So mm. you just wash your hands. Sometimes with no soap. And you quickly rush to the cafeteria. And imagine, you didn't wash with soap. And your fingers were stuck in the dead, in the human body there. And then you start eating. And you eat with your hands. You're in a hurry. Yeah, Pop wants, a bag. wants us back at 2 o'clock. You know, mm. that kind of shit. So, some people would not cope. So, that experience, yeah, second year, when you have to dissect the human body. The making it of was it. A, it was a determining factor of whether you're going to make it or not. Whether you, you mm. like you it or not. Cut for this or not. Exactly. So, uh, second year, that's when you, you, when you do anatomy, you cut up a human body. Mm. Yeah. Huh? But, like, what are the most rewarding and challenges, uh, like, challenging aspects uh, uh, of being a medical doctor, you know? There should be obviously some rewarding thing, but there should be challenges that you think or those challenges are unique to, to the profession. It's working long hours. Working long hours. Number one, number two, you are expected to be some divine being, godlike. You're not supposed to make mm. mistakes. Uh, you're supposed to be having answers for everything. Yeah, as we are talking about this, because I want us to move yeah. systematically. Yeah. Because now we are in the era where you know, like maybe you are doing your concepts now. Yeah. It's you now in hospital, you are assigned, you are working. Mm. I want so okay, it's it's those long hours and yeah, abnormal, especially when you're doing internship. Abnormal hours. Yo. I remember I did my internship at Ensign Hospital two thousand. Mm. We were only three interns. Okay, there were some guys, I don't know what happened. He could only complete his internship in June the following year. So we we're about four of us. Mm. Uh, but, but basically it was the three, the new interns were three. 
and there should be an then I don't know now at that hospital according to the classification they were supposed to be interns and when you have interns they're supposed to be an intern on duty uh, we call it a cock every day so now how it works is that you go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning mm. you knock off at half past 4 the call starts immediately you are working you will continue working until 8 o'clock the following day now because we're three it means every fourth day you have to be on call now you have to do your normal word work eight to four and then you go on call so we've got to be smart about it i remember i was with charlie Mate and Nikapeko, and um, eventually we decided no this ain't all and the hospital we're working at Tanzania is how it was classified is that there were no okay there were two comms i have logo if i can remember mm. and why don't i see that red light with this one is it on with mine it's on, okay. So, mm. <laughs> and there were a few doctors there. So, they used to use GPs for, to supplement. So, GPs would come and do, help us in the, in the casualty, at the casualty and after I was on call. Bo, bo, bo. I used to work a lot with, 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 uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 um, what I can Biza, Dr. Biza. <laughs> yeah, I was running, you know, they were the, the GPs were running the wards, you know. So it was very stressful. So we came up with a plan with these guys. So, like, we're only three interns. What do we do? Mm. So we'd share the call. So instead of one person working the whole night, it'll be two people working. So, me, I start. It's uh, from four in the morning, in the end of afternoon, five basically, until eight in the morning. Then we split it into into in, in, into two halves. No, oh, I guess you 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 can manage to sleep. Yes, yeah, so I'll start at five, continue probably around eleven, twelve. Then, then you can I'll rest, and then I go and rest. The other guy comes in and then finishes the call. That's how mm. we managed to do it, you know. And but we used to learn a lot because then you were uh, in the front line, unlike now. Yo, the interns now, they are spoiled. I have, so they have to say that. Back then, you would never call a medical officer like when you're on call because when you're on call, most people are in casualty. Mm. And you say, I'm tired. And Tanzania used to be busy. That Those were the days of malaria. Guys were stabbing each other. You'd find that and you got... It used to cater for those villages. The around, whole villages. You know? Around Giani. Yes. Mm. You find that it's four o'clock, you're tired already. When you get to casualty, there are already 20 patients. By the time the call ends, you have seen 60, 100 patients. And, and sometimes, depending on how busy it is, sometimes when you have to knock off, yes. you don't because there are cases. There are cases. You can't leave a case there. You can't. So you'd find that, I remember at that time I was tired, and I, I think it was uh, Dr. Vita, she was the clinical manager or superintendent. And I phoned. I phone this MO. I'm like, hey, I'm tired. I need to go and sleep. Is this, is there an emergency? I'm like, no, I'm just tired. I need to go and eat. And he says, no, I can only come and assist when you have to go to theater. Or if there's an emergency, which is here in the country. Mm. Oh, no, I've got angry. I'm like, I phone the, the superintendent. says, doc, but I'm tired. I'll start making mistakes. He says, Masiki. Is there an emergency? She says, work. Jesus. <laughs> she says, so we used to do, uh, legally we're supposed to be do what, 80 hours a week? So now now people have rights of. Uh, Chief, I remember I was doing sessions at Luba Homo and they called me. And then this guy calls me and says, uh, uh, I'm at maternity, I've got this case, case, case. I said, track it, track it, like to check the patient. Mm. You, you, you read the notes, but. Assess the patient and give me your own assessment, not what is written in the file. He says, no, I can only do it when you're here. Carmo, chief, but you are an intern. Do it and report to me. Then I'll tell you what to do. Oh, he says, then the, 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 the medical, the, 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 the nursing sister in charge says, oh, it's a mind. Mm. Mm. Over a path. 
our root of war one half week. Some Jesus things, things have changed. So mm. we're abused, but you go to learn a lot. I mean, I started being a Caesar, Caesarean section within 30 days of being an intern. Guys started being Caesarean sections probably in their uh, comsev or when they were MOs. 30 days after arriving at Kinsana, I could be a Caesar, even though I could take longer. Mm. But it was interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. So now you're yeah. practicing uh, Ladana Med, yeah. uh, which is our home. Many <laughs> of us, when we have emergencies, we come there. Yeah. Uh, in your experience, what are some of the most common health issues people face today and how can they be prevented? Uh, that's an interesting question. Look, uh, we've got, uh, it's something like it back in the days. Uh, you have what we call lifestyle diseases or conditions and other common infectious diseases. What, what are lifestyle diseases? That's a Good question. I don't like using that word because to me it sounds ambiguous, if I may put it that way. Because mm. lifestyle, it means behavior. Now, when we talk about behavior, there are a lot of conditions which you can... W with all this what, what, lifestyle. Lately, there's <laughs> the what, what, lifestyle. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uhuru lifestyle, whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> so now, when you talk about lifestyle, mm -hmm. let me talk about HIV. Even though there are a lot of contributing factors, mm. but it could be classified under lifestyle because it's human behavior which made people to contract it. Mm. High blood pressure, even though it can be classified under lifestyle, but it's got commonly a genetic predisposition, diabetes, mm. cholesterol. You know. So I don't like using that word lifestyle. You know, I like using the word communicable and non-communicable. Communicable means that you get it from somebody. It's communicated. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's like a transmission by virtue of contact somehow with somebody. Mm. So even medically, they classify them as that. But even though you still get people, even if you Google, it says lifestyle conditions. But it, 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 it's, it's a, it's, it's a blood kind of area there, mm. like mm. I'm saying. So I like using the words communicable and non-communicable. Communicable, it means you contract it by virtue of you contacting or, or in communication with somebody else. Whereas non-communicable, it means you get it independently. And the non-communicable ones are the ones which are usually classified under lifestyle, meaning that it's not by virtue of the fact that you... Uh, contracted it from somebody. But like I'm saying, it's bled because things like HIV, even high blood pressure, mm. there's a lifestyle kind of factor to it. But there's also a genetic predisposition, meaning that you can inherit genes which predispose you to getting these kind of things. Mm. HIV, uh, even though it's a communicable disease, meaning you have to contract it by virtue of you be engaging or behaving in such a manner. Mm. But it is still classified under communicable, but your lifestyle, your, your lifestyle behavior can actually lead you to exactly. contract it. Yeah. yeah, but generally, if we go back to the primitive, I call it uh, classification, the lifestyle conditions are your high blood, diabetes, cholesterol, um, okay, stroke, which obviously mostly secondary to diabetes and high blood pressure. Mm. And then you also get your cholesterol, I spoke about it. Those are the common ones. You that, get that, that could be from all this food we eat. and, and Exactly. And There's depression as well, which is classified under lifestyle as well. But mm. research has shown that it's also a genetic predisposition as well. So, you know, the, the, these things are intertwined. Yes. Yeah, yes. they're interwoven. Mm. So, yeah, the general ones, the, the, the primary ones are your high blood, or the common ones are your high blood diabetes and obesity. You mustn't forget about obesity. And then also cholesterol. Those probably contribute to about 70 to 80% of the case. Mm. I think you, you're mentioning obesity because of it's, it's a, you are prone to, to go high blood and diabetes when yes. you're obese. Yes, mm. definitely. So those are the recurring cases that mm. your 
dealing with most of the time mm. when you practice. But the funny part is <laughs> you get a very fit and healthy guy getting stroke due to high blood or somebody getting diabetes. Fit, not obese. Health instruct. There are cases, uh, soccer players, you know, the, 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 the toughest league in the world is the EPL, I think. Mm. And collapse in the field. And they collapse in the field. Uh, CVA, stroke. Mm. Uh, uh, b- 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 heart attack. You know, when they check the fund, this guy has the high cholesterol, high blood. But it's fit. Mm. Then on the other end, you get obese guys who drink, eats anything, anything, with no issues at all. So and the six pack guy is gone. Uh, they're gone. But okay, those are exceptional cases. Mm. But generally, is that with high blood, even though it's got a genetic predisposition, it's a combination of your genes and your lifestyle. Mm. Mm. So you may be predisposed by virtue of having those genes, but if you don't control what you eat and how you behave, you may have high blood diabetes. Mm. Uh, you can get obese. And obesity, remember, it's also the issue of genes because some people are born obese mm. because they inherited the stuff in their family. But that is for another day. It can be a, a topic where you have to engage with other people. But let's look at the basic things. That were, most of these things are due to lifestyle. Then we need to alter our lifestyle. A, a friend of mine got uh, diagnosed with... a. Uh, High blood, yeah, recently, yeah, and then well, he had a headache for three, four days, and they checked him, and they said, "No, your blood pressure is high, yeah, and extremely high, and they put him on medication, yeah, then took him the meds two, three days, he felt good, yeah, and he said, so he tells me that ah, I stopped." Taking yeah, those pills. That's common. It's very stressful. Yeah. Stop taking those pills. I'm feeling okay. Yeah. And so now I tell him that because I'm also struggling with hypertension. Yeah. Every day I must take pills. Yeah. And so I tell the guy, hey, you are playing with fire. Yes. Because sometimes high blood is so, you know, you, you won't feel that your blood pressure is high. Yes. And the next thing you come up with something. And besides that, you are also making it difficult for your kidneys yep. if your blood pressure is high. But I want you to explain that when you, for instance, even with high blood, just to deal with high blood, when you don't take medication and you have high blood, mm-hmm. wow, how damaging that is for your okay. health. You're very right that you're struggling with controlling that by virtue of various factors. Number one, most of the time people don't feel anything except the headache or dizziness. Mm. And that's when it's very high. The body is complaining because what happens is that when you develop high blood, the body tries and adjusts. It tries and control on, on its, its own. own. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's trying. It's trying very hard until it can't anymore. And then it starts reporting, chief I'm failing, chief I'm failing. And that is through headaches, with oh, dizziness. Oh, chief I tried. Uh, chief, please. I like you get a headache, it's yeah. telling you, go get assessed. Because you won't know by then what is going on. You twitch in your, your hand. Yeah. You can even get stroke before you even get diagnosed. Because people ignore these things. We think it's a headache. Ish, it's stress. It's a 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 stress. And people are scared of going to doctors because ideally, especially when you're 40 and above, you should be having an annual checkup. It's, it's actually biannual. Yes. Yeah. So... People don't like that because you're scared of being told what you don't want to hear. So mm. <laughs> you don't want to go to the doctor. You get a headache, you get a panado, it's gone. Fine. Mm. Three days later, it starts again. Ah, it's stress. Can't is the body now failing to adjust? A- and I want to share my story. Yes. Uh, uh, with high blood. Like I had this headache. I'm not a headache person. Yes. Pounding for five yeah. days. Yeah. And when I go there, you know what you do. And now I understand why blood pressure is the first thing, one of the first things you do yes. when somebody comes to your blood. Because of like, I can wear that thing, ah, but you know, they know what to do, it's a bad So they put that blood pressure thing. Yes. I could see the face of a doctor turning. Mm. Like, what's going on? Mm. Then, 
he, 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 he took it out, went to take another one mm -hmm. because he thought this one is faulty. It's faulty, yes. And as he was coming, a, a fellow doctor came with him. Yes. Or a, um, I have a special case, I don't understand. Mm. So Nagra, I don't know. I'm there, I'm just saying, hey, this headache, but I'm yes. not a headache person. Yes. So they checked me. Then immediately, I think they put some drip. Yes. They tried to stabilize me. Mm. But I was not aware that they're doing that. Mm. Then after I stabilized, then they explained to me, then they said, we don't understand why you didn't have stroke. Exactly. Medically. You have got uh, your case. We're supposed to be researching about, yeah. because we have exceeded the limit of yeah. someone who's supposed to get a stroke in a way that, if you checked us, we thought even this thing is broken. Mm -hmm. one. So from now on, Baba, we need to manage this thing. No, true. We get that, and 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 like I'm saying, me now I've made it a protocol in my practice. Even just the receptionist, and okay, we do have a nurse, but. Mm. I tell everybody, I've got the protocol which is written down. Anybody 30 and above, mm. and it's a new case, you do vitals. Blood pressure and sugar. Mm. It's standard. I get very finicky. I'm very strict. If I see a new case, by the time the guy comes into my consulting room and those two things have not been done, I get finicky. And, and for sure, it also saves your time. It's in, just my in time. diagnosing these things because yeah. already sometimes you go like, oh, I know, I know now what exactly. we want to do. Because a guy will come, a chief Kinyaga's <coughs> believer, a chief Kitsuriki flu. Yeah. This guy is a first time patient, probably 40, 35. Kitsuriki a hot rod. We check the blood and. I look, it's done at the no, I'm very strict. I want to see posted in front of the client the blood pressure readings and the sugar readings. Mm. And you'll be surprised how many times I pick up things which the guy didn't come for. I'm like, chief, and when, when the blood pressure is high, and also the technique, I teach them how to do it properly. So when the blood pressure is high, I tell them, look, let the person sit down, mm. recheck it after 15 to 30 minutes. Because sometimes they would have been coming from the gym or they were running yeah, and they took well, a having a call, a disturbing call in the exactly. car. So yeah. let them relax, watch TV, calm down, 30 minutes later, redo the blood pressure. So it's done twice mm. before I even see them. So if it's high the first time, it must be done again. And you'll be surprised. The guy comes in, he looks fit and healthy. I'm like, Chief, you got high blood. Huh? Oh, I'm right. Ah, oh, maybe you give me a mask. He's please. having water on his hand. He's from the gym in the morning. They're in full denial. It's very difficult for most of these guys to be convinced that. And he's not feeling anything, remember? Not. It's a silent killer. I call it a silent killer. We call it a silent killer. So now, that's when education from the doctor starts because you need to educate these people. <laughs> it will still be tough, but you need to educate them because that's when they, when they're in denial, they won't take medication because they're used to taking flu medication for uh, three, four days and then they stop. When you tell them it's medication for life, they're, I'm right now, no, 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 not that. <laughs> or they take it, they go to a pharmacy or maybe some other doctor, three, four days later, the blood pressure is normal. food <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I also blame us medical professionals because we don't educate these people. Some mm -hmm. even don't. You'll be shocked. Eh? You get nurses who a reading is high, but they tell the patient it's normal. I see that a lot with sugar and high blood. Mm -hmm. So it's multifactorial. And that's where also I have a problem with this NHI. Because they want to force the NHI onto the system without first re-educating the health professionals, first fixing the infrastructure and all sorts of things. So we have a problem here because primary health care should be the driving force. Mm. But if you get a nurse who cannot differentiate between a normal blood pressure and a high blood pressure, then you have a problem. You get a patient who comes with a reading of your sugar at 12, but in normal. I'm like, eh, what rubbish is this? B because I, I had a question or questions on public health. Yes. And I think we're already there because you've many you 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 have mentioned this NHI. Sure. Uh what like what is your take on the current state of public health care in South Africa? Ah, it's messed up. Sorry, <laughs> maybe a bit political, but it's messed up. Look, we're dealing with people who are politicians. Fair enough, with due respect, currently our Minister of Health is a doctor. And I'm sure without due uh, 
pretense that he knows the state of the public health. It has collapsed. It has collapsed. But look, we have different interests or mm. interest groups. Good job. Communist party who think uh, all is equal, what, 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 and all sorts of funny things. Yeah, people must be treated equally. But theoretically, it's fine. But practically, it's it's, it's not working. Because mm. we, uh, South Africa has got one of the most unequal, uh, 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 what do you call this? Um, uh, wealth distribution in the world, if I may put it that yeah. way. Is uh, what you call what what indexed. Now, you cannot say to me you want everybody to drive a car instead of walking. Everybody must be equal. There should be nobody driving a Mercedes Benz. Everybody must be driving Polos. Mm, mm. But the roads are not fixed. Where are you going to drive those cars? So now, yes, it's a noble idea. People are talking about NHI. It's called the National Health Insurance Fund, whereby the government, by virtue of an act of parliament, which was passed just now, now I think it was for votes, <laughs> they just mm. rushed it through. And apparently it needs to be signed, isn't it? Yeah. In the, the, a month the, time or something. No, Ramaphosa has signed it into law. Mm. But now they have to implement it. It was signed into law, I think a week or two, a month before the May elections. Mm. It was just a political ploy and all kind of things. Just like your former president who said uh, free education for all when they were going to Nazareth in 2017. It was not practical at all. And the one million houses. Uh, so they signed it into law, but then it's fine. The implementation is where the problem is. The, the public infrastructure has completely collapsed. Mm. I think the, the the health department it may be the most funded on the second most funded after the education department in terms of budget. Yeah. But we don't see it. It's not filtering down. There's too much corruption. When people when hospitals, clinics have to be fixed, drugs have to be it's a lot of politics. So it's a noble idea, but they need to fix the infrastructure before they can talk about implementing it. You cannot build a house without a proper foundation. It will collapse. What you're saying is that infrastructure-wise, yes, uh, competency, competence, human resource, human resource, re educating the health professionals about how things should be done. We are very far behind. Supply chain. We, we, look, there was a case now. It, was it Helen Joseph, that white guy, and talking about thing and thing and thing? Guys would be saying, no, you must go to, yeah, now that is a white man complaining, go to private hospital. But guys, let's not, uh, 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 what do you call it, fight the man. Oh, yes, it was signed in May. Yes, it was signed in May. Yeah. 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 Mm. So guys are, 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 are looking at who is saying it instead of what is happening. You know? So... It's a problem. I, I know they like using the UK as a model of this NHI. But to be honest, I hope I'm not going to be grilled or mm. whatever for the saying this. No, no. I the, the, the Minister of Health is being disingenuous about the issue of UK being used as a model. NHI in, at, uh, at the United Kingdom has if I may say, collapsed. They can't take it. And remember, we like to call ourselves a first world country, but we're just having pockets of first world in the midst of a third world country. UK is a first world country. Now imagine UK being a first world country, being unable to manage the NHI. In actual fact, you get people from first world countries, especially the UK, coming to South Africa as medical tourists to come and get uh, a, a treatment, which they can't get in UK. Because remember now, everybody is supposed to be equal. Just for you to take out your tooth, for instance. Here you have medical aid. You just phone, okay, chief, where can I get a dentist? Oh, I've got a dentist. Oh, sharp. Uh, wait, 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 doctor. They say you 
you must close down. No, not like that. What are they saying? What are they are saying is that now we are be, we'll be getting directives from the government as to how we see patients. You no longer, you can have walk-ins, but it will be rare. Now they first have to be probably assessed somewhere at the primary level. Mm. Then they look at where the patient is staying. Then they allocate patients according to their geographical location. And 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 it's on a first time, a first come first, first basis. basis. Equal treatment. Equal treatment. And, and and one thing that I I actually admire about your private practices. Yes. You have dealt with families for years. Yes. Some of the kids you are treating, you started to work on them before they were even born. Sure. Preparing the family, what sure. they must get, supplements and all that. Sure. A kid is born. You have files and cases. Yep. You even know this family genetically, they struggle with this. Yes. And you wonder if such information is there yeah. about us in, 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 in private institutions, right? in public institutions. Yeah. Yet they want to implement this thing. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not practical. Man. Implementing will take about 15 years. They are using Bo UK, they are using Bo, 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 Bo Japan, Bo, 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 Korea, and all sorts. Those guys took probably from 40, 50 years to come where they are now, or mm. to be where they are right now. Now you want to come and implement with the corruption we're having here. I mean, look at China, for instance. Mm. China, they had to, to be very authoritarian for them to be where they are. Yeah. I don't want to use the word dictatorship, but they had to be, you know. No, 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 I can tell you. We we need a dictator to fix this country. I believe you. Yeah. Tell to me. to hurt us, some of us we cry. Some need to be killed, they must be killed. Yeah. To get this country in order. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We need to get the country going. So you cannot get the NHI going right now because the infrastructure is basically uh, it's 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 it's, 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 kaput, it's kaput, yeah. Mm. And for us to fix the infrastructure, infrastructure is gonna take us between five and ten years. Now, mm. the human resources as well. So, I, mean, I think it will take about probably fifteen to up to thirty years for it to be implementable. But they want to force it down our throats because now the general elections are coming again in the next four five years. Now things have to be sorted out. Now it will collapse. You build a house without a proper foundation, it will collapse. It, that, that is a fact. It's clear. It's clear. You can't beat the bush about it. It, it, is, it is what it is. Mm. So is the issue of hey, hey, the DA, the whites, this, the white. But they know, these guys, that we don't have infrastructure. Mm. You know, it's just like uh, this guy, the Communist Party guy, who said, "Yeah, hey, you are in bed with the with with, with the so, so, Tetla colonial, what, 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 what?" Some of these guys are ministers. They're like, "Okay, mm -hmm. they want the bread, but they don't want to uh, people to do <laughs> how the bread was brought." I, I don't want us to move you know, too much into politics. Sure, it's but I, wa I want us to go back to lifestyle diseases, especially diabetes. Sure, how can one? Uh, how can one maybe find him or herself being diabetic from lifestyle? Okay. There are various types of diabetes. Mm. The classifications, well, are depending on who looks at and where the person is. There's the WHO, World Health Organization classification, all sorts of things. But the basic classifications go type 1, type 2. Uh, type 1, it is the what we also call juvenile. You get it when you are young. Type 2, it's an adult onset kind of diabetes. And then uh, you also have various other classifications, gestational, when you're pregnant, all sorts of things. So type 1, you can't control that. What happens is that um, you have what you call the pancreas. I don't want to be very... Uh, academic about it, but there's a, an organ underneath the stomach called the pancreas, mm. which secretes insulin. And insulin is the hormone which controls the sugar levels in the, the body. Sugar levels when the sugar is very high, the pancreas secretes more uh, insulin to take it down. When it's low, it reduces the insulin. You know, it's an interplay. Mm. Yeah. 
So now with type 1, what happens is the pancreas, basically, certain parts of the pancreas which secrete insulin are destroyed by other conditions, commonly viral conditions, uh, which the kid could have had. You know, uh, flu can be anything. Excessive taking of alcohol. No, 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 no. With, it, it's, but that's what we call it type 1. Yeah. Type 1, it's infantile, it, it, it's juvenile. Meaning that you get it when you're young. Mm. Something destroyed your pancreas. It can be an operation, it can be viruses, it can be anything. It can be autoimmune, meaning where the body attacks its own cells. Mm. So type 1, you get it when you're very young. It has got nothing to do with lifestyle. And then you put on insulin wire wire. Type 2 is whereby the body, for some odd reason, starts resisting the effect of the insulin. The insulin says, I want to do this. The body says, I know you. you know. So there, that's when a lot of thing, factors come into play. Like I said, you may have genetic predisposition to that, but with lifestyle, when you start getting obese, and studies have shown that, especially, it's not general obesity, it's trunkal, uh, big stomachs. You know, because people think it's obesity in general. It's just that when you're obese, some people tend to have big stomachs, but it's mostly the trunkal obesity that's been found out that with trunkal obesity, there is some stuff which is secreted which now interferes with insulin functioning. Mm. So when you get to be obese, the insulin functioning gets to be affected. And when it gets to be affected, the sugar control becomes difficult. Now you have high sugar continuously and then that destroys organs, your heart, your brain, your kidneys, uh, erection problems, and, and, and all sorts of things. And that can also predispose you to high blood pressure because when the blood vessels are damaged, mm. then they're no longer able to be flexible. And that also can predispose you to cholesterol. So these three, are called they are called the triad or they are called the, 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 the triplets because they usually either coexist or the one contribute to the other being... Uh, the other cause, the other come to Exactly, me. yes, you know. So, oh, so scary, man. lifestyle is very important. Yes, we say to people, this is what you call BMI, body mass index. It should not be above 30. I'm not sure whether it's 29, 28, and above the, 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 the upper limit. But generally, I would say it should not be above 30. But remember, with, 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 with weight, there is also the genetic predisposition. People are, some people are born obese, not because they like it. Mm. But we're looking at the, the general management that people should not be very obese to control the weight, especially tranquil obesity, not general weight. And then, uh, 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 so, and then you eat healthily as well. Because too much salt, too much sugar, uh, you know, and sugar, we're talking about starch most of the time. Black mm. people like eating a lot of pop, potato, macaroni, all sorts of things. Sometimes you have pop and macaroni in the same plate. <laughs> it's a mess. Mm. Because those contribute to... Because generally, what happens is that when you eat sugar, the body likes storing. The body is designed to prepare for the future. So any excess sugar which you have, the body stores it. Mm. And then it's turned into fat, which then can be put back uh, through various methods, Krebs cycles and all sorts of things, back into the circulation when it's needed. So as it's being stored, obviously you start gaining weight. So what we try and avoid is to have excess of that. So that's why people must start exercising, eat healthily, on all sorts of things. But as I said, keep on bearing in mind the genetic predisposition. Mm. Yeah. So lifestyle, yes, plays a major role. Even when you put somebody on treatment. And I see it a lot, especially with diabetes. With high blood, it's not a, much, uh, a big problem. But with diabetes, it's 50-50. I like calling it. Medication, 50% management. Lifestyle, 50% management. Because you get somebody, for instance, you put them on treatment, yeah, diabetes mm. but they are still eating junk the sugar is always high you can't control that that's why I've got my own protocol I mean I 
I, I, I call it a diabetes management protocol. Mm. Yeah, because uh, 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 I've done a CDE course. You know, it's done mm. in Johannesburg way back. We need to do refresher courses. So I've designed my own protocol. That is why, with due respect, I don't like taking my patients to other people who say go do diet management. Because you find these people, they tell them to eat a lot of fruit. <laughs> now, fruit has got what do you call fructose, sucrose. It's 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 basically sugar. Mm. Because now, people people don't know that uh, just one banana the yes. am- amount of sugar is there, that and is they there. think it's natural, it's healthy. It's healthy. Mm. Now I tell these people, look, guys, you cannot. That's why I, I I structure a nice program from in the morning. And another thing with with management of diabetes, it, it's got its own peculiar way of being managed. For instance, we like telling people eat before you take your medication. Mm. But with diabetes, it doesn't work like that. You have to take your medication before you eat. 15 minutes, 30 minutes before you eat. Mm. Because you want the food, by the time it gets into the stomach and gets into the blood, the medication is waiting for it. Because mm. we must manage diabetes the way the body, we mimic the management of sugar the way the body works uh, 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 in a normal person. Mm. When you get hungry right now, the body, remember it's one body. Your stomach interacts with the brain. It knows that you're going to eat right now. Mm. Then it's the brain sends instructions to the pancreas. Say, start secreting insulin because fortune is going to be eating within the next 30 minutes. By the time you eat, insulin is circulating in your body. Then when the sugar goes in, within two hours, it's brought down by the insulin. But if you eat first, then you're going to go take medication. There are two problems. The sugar will be circulating in the blood before it can be taken. It comes late. It comes late. Now it starts causing damage. Mm. Secondly, the medication, because you took it with having a full stomach or something in the stomach, some of the food you eat can interfere with the workings mm. Mm. of the medication or absorption of the medication. So, so, so what you're saying is that it is important as a, a practitioner to teach people education how is the to best take uh, medication yes how to eat yes uh, not necessarily going on some diets that there's are no diet. and everything many of my patients there's no diabetic diet and it's a fact there's no a person who is diabetes for instance can eat anything which a normal person eats it's how you eat it it's mm. not what you eat i tell them straight you can eat anything you want mm. Let's say it's uh, so, uh, what do you call the festive season or Easter where you like having family gatherings and there's like sort of a buffet eating all sorts of kinds of meats and stuff. I tell them, you can eat from one end of the table to the other end of the table. But the issue is how you do it. Mm. Like small amounts of food, time is involved. So it's time and a small amount of food. But mm. you can eat anything. I mm. mean, for instance, I tell them, look, Let's say there's vors, there's beef, there's chicken, there's fish. Those who don't have diabetes can pile that stuff up in one plate. Mm. But people with diabetes, you can eat vors in the morning, small amount, lunch, eat fish, uh, late in the afternoon, eat beef, mm. and then probably supper, you eat chicken. But by the end of the day, you've eaten everything. I, I would believe that you collaborate with other dietitians, maybe. We do, but uh, the issue is, like I'm saying, I, I picked up uh, somehow that, I don't know, education is very important. doesn't mm. mean if I'm a doctor, I know everything. Yeah. doesn't mean if you're a dietitian, you know everything. Mm. You need to interact with other people. That's why I'm always interacting almost on a daily basis with other specialists, physicians, there, surgeons, latahomu. You need to you need to keep on interacting. Don't think you uh, you are God, you know everything, because you mess up. Mm. So what I picked up from some of these people, like I'm saying, they tell them to eat a lot of fruits. That's rubbish. You can't tell a diet, uh, the diabetic patient to eat a lot of fruits. Because what they end up doing, you find that at a particular time, they eat probably three, four bananas, or a banana mm. and orange and what, what, and an apple. Those things have got a lot of sugar. So that is a big problem. We have Somebody uh, uh, chilling with a, a bucket of mangoes. A bucket of mangoes. You get somebody with blacks like putting pop in one plate, meat in another plate. 
now you eat and the nurse is there at the clinic they tell you yeah o tsantse o je o gore be phone di tla o gore ka diabetes you crazy i tell them straight you no longer when you're diabetic you no longer eat because you are hungry when you're diabetic one you eat because i put them i drop a schedule you eat because it's time to eat mm. number one, eat small amount of food number two, military discipline and military i mean real military discipline so you cannot afford and it, the, the, the issue or when you eat because it's time to eat it limits that thing or you don't have to eat a lot of food because now you no longer eat because you're hungry eat because it's time to eat so sometimes you may not be hungry but you have to take a snack probably that maybe it's time for medication and other things Mm. So it limits that thing you already have to go by the time you're hungry now you eat everything and you eat a lot. So when I put them that they must eat at 3 hour intervals. Mm. So so talk, what you're saying is that 30s in your 30s 40s we need to really really now uh really take care of check our lifestyles. Yes. Because they can lead us to so many things. So many things yes. But there's also one thing that you mentioned there the issue of Uh, erect- erectile dysfunction yes and uh, i mean much that man i'm a light you'll hear man people are saying no hey ergi sorry some don't even ask you ergi but tenya na plus eh interesting yeah that they organize the game yeah and, and, and <laughs> this afro this what what is what i want to know uh, um how damaging are this behavior look for status of this yaks uh it's it's different kind of stuff there are those which you get from the traditional uh, setup and you get those other ones you get from mm. yeah formal setup if i may say it mm. yeah mm. so unfortunately that is why when you get medication it's supposed to be labeled and tells you what's in there. Mm. And that is the reason now that the government is trying to close that loophole or gray area because a lot of people put things on the pharmacy shelves as supplements. So in the olden days anything which is a supplement never used to be regulated by government act or, mm. you know because it's a supplement it's not a medication basically. That's why you used to get uh, in the early days or ubejani and stuff like that from KZN and they say it used to cure AIDS and people used to take it and stuff like that mm. because we don't know the content and as long as i don't know the contents i cannot be able to say much about that stuff mm. because you go to some guy he grinds things mix things and they say roots from there stuff leaves this drink drink but what i've picked up is that most of this stuff they bugger the kidneys because the kidneys and the ones who clean up the blood. Oh. I have a few patients who died. Uh, there was a place, I think as you go past uh, kidney disease. Yes. There's a place as you pass by the training first after those mountains, the first oh, turn right. Uh, when 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 you turn right there's always people st- there are yeah. pharmacists there. Yes, you yeah. got your traditional pharmacists there. Yeah. I had about probably four or five patients who died. From those, taking something from there, from those guys, and, and these things are not reported. You just get a bottle uh, with a Coca-Cola lo- looking uh, uh, liquid inside there. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> these things about the erection are a bit. Uh, In the name of erection, you yeah, die. Yeah, so people don't say much. They tell you that as a, as a, as a doctor, and mm. only when now they're starting getting sick. But oh. you don't go and report you have that I took stuff from the streets. So when they are sick and they, and when you have kidney failure, especially acute meaning it's 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 recent and it's quick, it's a rapid onset, and you go to the hospital seven days later you are dead because the kidneys are what you call the the the, the how can I put it the engine of the body the sewage of the body they clean up the blood. That's their job. Twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. So any thing which is in the blood has to pass by the kidneys. So that is why the kidneys get bugged first. And once you have kidney failure it means nothing is there to clean up your system. <sighs> Now toxins pile up in the body. How not the filled? How not the filter? Exactly that's it. So you die. 
So, so we, we, we are not saying there's something wrong with our traditional medicine and yeah. but we really need to be careful. Very yeah. careful. Because of you could be uh, messing up your kidneys. Yes. Yes. And remember, people may be having other comorbidities, meaning other medical conditions, mm. which may either be influenced badly by the medication. When I guess gupuka, guess gupuka. Even normal medication. If mm. I have to give you high blood medication, I must first find out if you have other problems mm. or other medication you're taking, mm. which may be influenced adversely by the medication I'm about to give you. So I'm not just start giving you this. I must ask you about other health conditions which you may be having. So it's, it's an intricate kind of a setup. Because you can go to a garage yeah. and buy some pills. There's a lot of that stuff there. Yeah, yeah. buy yeah. some pills uh, 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 for your erection. I you want to see veins. Yes. Uh, and God, I, I want you to, 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 to warn people to understand what they're getting themselves into. Yeah, but <laughs> look, it's all about being manly. It's all about being a, a tiger in bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's very intricate because, like I'm saying, before people ideally before people start taking things, they were mm. supposed to be assessed. Mm. Mm. For instance, like I'm saying to you, let's say you have a heart condition. Mm. There are some high blood pressure medication I can't give you if you have got a high condition because they may worsen it. If you have asthma, there are some blood pressure medication I can't give it to you because I will kill you. Hmm. So, ideally, we're supposed to be, but it, 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 that is, like I'm saying, that's how it's supposed to be ideally, but hmm. practically or generally, <laughs> we, we don't apply that kind of stuff. You get a woman now, you say, ish, ish, again, I'm at, like, I'm all, let me mm. rush to the garage or the pharmacy. They give you stuff. No, besides, I want to stuff. Yeah. And somebody gives you some, exactly. some red pills. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know when they come. Or, hey, born at that last. And, and in most guys, <laughs> I've seen it. Most guys will just fall into that. Yes. And drink, doesn't even know what that is. And then tomorrow and turn out, we have a regular. Then a sudden note as group. Yeah. But you don't know what it's doing to your health. Yes. Base, what, what, and stuff. But you don't know the ingredients. That is what is important. Because if I were to know the ingredients, that's what I'm saying. The government is trying to, is trying to close the loophole now. Anything put in a pharmacy, whether it's a prescription or in the shelf, or on the shelf, mm. it has to have an ingredients. Then you bring it to me, I'll be able to say, okay, based on what's written, that th these are the ingredients. One, two, three, four. But mm. if I don't know what's in there, I can't comment. That is a problem. And that's a problem with most of this traditional medication. Yes. A friend says this thing, you don't even know what it contains in there, and then you just take it. And okay. The next thing. Can you go run drug cleaning system? Yeah. And then the next thing. Yeah. But when you go and get sick, you don't mention that, or they don't mention that you took something. I have a you die, mm. and uh, mm. mm. Or hey, mm. you say, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a the man, was a champion for a year, yeah. taking things. Into. Yeah. So there's a lot of play, man. Yeah. It's a huge topic, this. You know, we should be actually bringing in other guys, you are dietitians and everybody. We talk about these things, pharmacists and everything. Yeah. I think, Doc, there's, there's so much that uh, we can discuss, but... We want to make this your home, you know. Yeah. If possible, six months shouldn't pass. Uh, 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 no, that would be lovely, man. Yeah. I would drop because, in because you are, mm. I've got the dietitians who I work with. Mm. I've got pharmacists. Uh, what my wish. Yeah. We could engage, either come yeah. together. Maybe maybe we'll start with individual interviews, individual, then yes. come with a round table. Exactly. Because issues of health now, we are killed by... By things that we think are fun yes. to, 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 to actually have. Yeah. You know, the very same starlights, the bottles that come with starlights that sure. we worship so much. Yeah. We don't know the impact. Mm -hmm. We need someone to come and say, listen, when you drink uh, a certain amount of alcohol, this is what it does to your liver. Sure. Uh, and this is what, how it's going to take for your liver to recover. And at some point, your liver won't recover. Sure. This 
are the consequences. Yeah. So I think from here you 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 be our first. You are our first medical doctor oh. that we interview here. Oh, you are our link right. now yeah. uh, uh, to give us these people, dietitians and everything. But yeah. the issue of health, I think, it should be something that uh, uh, occurs a lot in this show yeah. uh, because we try to. I can see uh, myself in my forties. Uh, uh, simple things, small things, I panic. Mm. And I always go, you know I call you at night. <laughs> hey man, yeah. this is how I feel. I call you all day. I think it's many of us. Health because promotion is you've very been important. taking care of us for more than 20 years. No, for See? sure. Yeah. But health promotion is very important. Mm. Prevention is better than cure. Mm. And people should start knowing what to look at. In your teens, there isn't much. Okay, you can check for the juvenile or early onset diabetes. Mm. But once you start getting into your 20s, late 20s, 30s, 40s, mm. then you start knowing what to look for. You yeah. understand? For instance, as I'm saying, 30s is your diabetes and high blood. Yeah. Uh, 40s, some cancers start coming into play. Women, you talk about cervical cancer. Uh, men, some as early as 40s, you have prostate cancer. Mm. You look at breast cancer. So there's a lot. It would be nice to have an oncologist uh, here. No, definitely. Yeah. I know quite a few. Yeah. And, and if you can converse questions from the population in general, I don't know how you do it with the yeah. podcast. I think even the, even the, 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 um, the viewers yeah. should, should also indicate on this exactly. one. Comment, make comments on yes. what should we look at. Exactly. Because health is now wealth. Yes. Uh, and you'll see it as you grow that you, sure. I, I need this thing because I need this body to carry me yeah. at least 60 years now. No, so that's true. Yeah, I need this body to carry me. And then each and every day I'm working against it. Yeah. I want. But besides that, with regard to erections, uh, I need the pills you use. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> <say. laughs> I think I'll be safe. You know? <laughs> I'm just lucky to be still healthy. You know, at my age, I'll be very honest with you. Mm. I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood. Mm. And it's, 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 it's there in my family. A lot and both sides, my mother's pa side and my father's side. Mm. But luckily, so far, I'm, I'm lucky. So okay, I just try. <laughs> I've got a bit of a tummy. I just hope it doesn't contribute to. <laughs> but I think I haven't yeah. done the gym in a long time. But mm. yeah, let people be free. They can probably contact me at, on my email. Please, please, met. please tell, tell them how people can get rich of you. Yeah, especially those who are around Pulukwan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's ladanamed at gmail.com. So it's a fairly simple email. Yeah. Ladana, or, double yeah, M. Yeah. It's L A D A A, I mean L A D A N N A M E D at gmail.com. Yeah. Or they can get me on my cell phone, which is 079 uh, 862 uh, uh, 4919. Please say it again. 079 862 mm. Four nine one nine, yeah. and I'd appreciate it if they just call me a WhatsApp because yeah. usually when I'm at work or busy, you can't I don't take, take calls. calls. Yeah, yeah. At but a WhatsApp can. it won't disappear. So yeah. they just call in a WhatsApp there, yeah. and then I'll respond anytime. I think it's, it's time uh, we look at our health yeah. uh, as, as as viewers, and and this is an opportunity. I mean, drop a WhatsApp and say, listen. I mean, even coming for a checkup, you are, you might yeah, be feeling sure. good, feeling healthy. Yeah. Uh, and you find that there's something underlying before yeah. it's too late. Yeah. You can actually uh, 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 pick it up. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm forced to go to renew my prescription every six months. Yeah. And when I go there, I always test uh, 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 cholesterol, sugar. Sure. Uh, uh, I check uh, 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 prostate. Yes. Uh, I do those tests. Especially cholesterol. Mm. It's also another silent killer which a lot of people ignore. Mm. Even medical is now, as I'm talking. Mm. If you have a high cholesterol without having another comorbidity like high blood or especially diabetes, mm. they don't like funding it under chronic. I don't know why, whether they're taking it lightly or because they like cutting corners so that there's profit. It's, it's a capitalist world. But cholesterol is one of the biggest killers and it's a silent. Uh, and the people think for you to have high cholesterol, you must be fat. No. They don't know that a lean six-pack guy. Exactly. Like I told mm. you that a high blood, a person who's a soccer player, the APL, or is a gym instructor can suddenly collapse because of stroke when they do investigations or he goes and 
does whatever he went to a doctor for flu and suddenly find out that he's got high blood pressure and he's like oh, i know where he's not feet mm. he's got nothing to do with that so it's a lot mm. at play there interplay between working uh, the genes and the environment you know so mm. so people uh, they need to look at those things and mm. look at it properly doc i love your work i love your consistency yeah for more than 20 years you've sure. been doing what to do I'm, I'm even impressed that you are now even an LLB student oh, thank and you. also doing uh, um, become law yes. uh, because you also need to deal with this thing from a legal perspective, legal, especially medical me, issues. Yes, medical, and legal it's so issues. inspiring for somebody that I think you've been consistent and you're doing well for yourself. Thank you. And you're also studying. Yes. I think it should say a lot about, about you and I, it should also evoke yeah. some feelings how we need to look at life yeah. so thank you for listening to this uh, another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino we'll call you again definitely and please uh, let your colleagues come here yeah. to share the information yeah maybe I'll form a, a legal practice with my son he's doing his final year <laughs> yeah, LLB oh so we hope so yeah. and another thing I'm trying to I'm busy with some IT funding mm. uh, to develop some sort of a, an app Yes. Whereby you, mm. let's say you want to come and consult. Yeah. I know before and why you're coming. You mm. get into the app, you say, I'm um, DJ Cappuccino, yeah? Mm. I've got flu. You mention the symptoms. Mm. And then I pick it up. By the time you come in, I've already done a prescription. You tell me if you've got comorbidities or other problems. Mm. So if you've got no other issues and stuff, when you come in, already I know what you have. Mm. By the time they say, the next file is complexion. I mean, a cappuccino. And I'm like, okay, that's mm. fine. You get to reception, you get your STD package, you're gone. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here now. No, Thank you very much <laughs> for, for, for checking out this episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to be part of this uh, growing family. Yeah. We're going for ATA. <laughs>